All right, welcome back to another Mr. Pisto Plays Magic the Gathering Arena Brawl Deck Tech and Gameplay Session. We have Finn the Fang Bear. That's right. We finally got to the Death Touch Commander. So he's a 2 mana 1 3 with Death Touch. And whenever a creature you control with Death Touch deals combat damage to a player, that player gets two. Yes, two poison counters. And then the player who has 10 or more poison counters loses the game unfortunately right now with mono green we don't have that much death touch so it is a death touch and a mono green aggro style of deck with a small elf sub sub theme all right let's get into the cards the death touch the elves the beasts the fight and the fly the lizard brawl one mana fight spell if you control three or more snow permanents your creature gets plus one plus O and indestructible until the end of turn gilded goose a ramp creature that uses the food tokens to create mana you can also pay a green and a colorless to create a food token and it comes into play with one uh, itself Dispar sentinel usually not the best elf to play but we are playing it it does provide us some form of pseudo ramp and also um it is an elf so it has some synergy in the deck moss viper and tajuru blight blade the viper and the Bl light blade both have death touch the elf is a little bit better because it does have a little bit of synergy within our deck but those are two of our death touch creatures we have cliff haven kite sail one mana it equips to a creature automatically when it enters the battlefield and it gives flying so it gives finn some evasion to get in there and deal the poison damage uh, Shadow Spirit gives Finn Trample, which is really important, and, and plus one power. So if they block Finn with one creature, uh, we're, we're guaranteed to get one poison to the two poison counters on um, our opponent with the Shadow Spirit in play. And also, you can pay a mana to give or to take away Hexproof and Indestructible from your opponent's creature until end of turn or permanence, I should say. Primal Might is another one of those fight spells. It makes your creature X plus X plus X bigger until the end of turn and fights another creature. So giving your death touch creatures fight abilities, more specifically punching abilities, is better. And we'll get to those. One of our big time finishers in the deck is Elvish Warmaster. Whenever an elf and one or more elves enter the battlefield under your control create a 1-1 green elf warrior creature token this ability triggers only once each turn and then you can pay seven mana to give all your elves plus two plus two and death touch until the end of turn if you have fin out and a few elves you've probably just killed them with poison heroic intervention instant speed protection and hex proof and indestructible to all your permanents until the end of turn uh, inspect inscription of abundance uh if you kick this for the three extra mana you get all three of these if you don't you can either put two one one counters on a creature you can gain x life for x is the greatest power among creatures you control or you can have a creature that you control fight another target creature you don't control so it helps get flynn and the death touch crew through once upon a time this is a great card in this deck you're either you're trying to dig for your death touch creatures and they're not easy to dig for uh, once upon a time if i have it in my opening hand i'm almost always using it after my draw step or before i cast my spell on my turn because i want to find that one mana one one moss viper or tajuru blight blade so i can have a death toucher on turn one so you look at the top five cards of your library reveal a creature or a land card and put the rest on the bottom of your library in random order the first spell you cast you can pay zero mana for it Rabbit Bite and Ram Through are both deal damage effects. Um, Rabbit Bite deals uh, damage equal to the power, your creature's power you don't control. So there's no fight. It's just a one sided fight. Same with Ram Through. But if you have Trample, any excess damage makes its own way through to the opponent. Sculptor Winter is an elf that untaps a Snowland. We are playing Snowlands. We're not playing the package of. Uh, enchantments and auras that enchant your lands because we're not trying to get super high in our mana curve we only have four spells above four cmc so it is effectively a two mana mana dork war, war buyer Bre 
Blessing is an aura that you chant your creature you control. It gets plus zero, plus two, and it fights one creature you don't control. Wildborn Preserver, another elf. And this one has synergy with non-human creatures entering the battlefield and putting 1-1 one, one counters on it. For X is the amount of mana you have left if you want to use it all on it. Uh, Wilt, instant speed, destroy target artifact or enchantment, and you can cycle it for two, so it's a nice cycling card draw mechanic there. Arcane Signet gives us green mana, and that's about all it does. Uh, Mirror Shield gives our creature plus zero plus two and hex proof, so it's nice to protect Flynn with some hex proof. And also, if it is to be blocked by or becomes blocked by this creature, and if that creature has death touch, you destroy it. Wings of Hubris. I really am beginning to actually like this card a lot more. Uh, two mana. Equips for one. Gives your equipped creature flying. But you can also sacrifice the Wings of Hubris to make your creature unblockable until the end of turn. So you can get Flynn for that one extra point of damage in if you need to. Uh, but then you have to sacrifice that creature. So it's only good for finishing the, ga finishing the game. Broken Wings, another nice instant speed artifact and enchantment removal with the added bonus of destroying a creature. Fierce Empath finds a creature with converted mana cost 6 or greater, puts it in our hand. So we have Vorinclex to help us double our counters or have the counters in our opponent's control. It is also a 6-6 six, six Trample Hasty Boy. And we have Kogla the Titan Ape, which fights something. Uh, Finn is a human, so his green and a colorless return target human you control to its owner's hand. Uh, Kogla gains indestructible to the end of turn is quite nice. We can save Finn from pinpoint removal or even mass removal and also protect Kogla at the same time. And it can also blow up artifacts and enchantments when it attacks. Uh, Garruk's Uprising. It's nice to give all our creatures trample. We have a decent number of creatures with power four or greater, but it's mainly here for the trample. And you draw cards when a creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield or this enters the battlefield and you have one of those creatures in play. Landmore Visionary, another elf. This time it draws a card and taps for two, or taps for a green mana and there's a two, two for three. We have two, the two, three mana features in green. We have the old growth troll, which is a four, four on face value. And then when it dies, you return to the battlefield as an aura enchantment with enchant forest. You can tap that forest at two mana or you can pay one and sacrifice this land to create a 4-4 green troll warrior creature token with trample. You can do that at instant speed. So you don't have to wait until your turn to actually activate that secondary ability. We have Yorval, Lord of Garenbrig, my original mono green commander when we first started this channel. He is a 3 mana 0-0, zero, zero, but he enters with 4 one, one counters. And whenever another green creature enters the battlefield, you put a 1-1 one, one counter on Yorval. And if that creature is still bigger than Yorval, you put another 1-1 one, one counter on Yorval. So if a 7 power toughness power creature comes into play and he is a 4-4, four, four, make him a 5-5. Five, five. Then you check again. 7 power is bigger than 5 power. So you put another counter on them. Crystalline Giant is in this deck because at the odd chance that you get Death Touch, then it's nice to have another Death Toucher in our deck. But being able to get Flying, First Strike, Death Touch, Hexproof, Lifelink, Menace, Reach, Trample, Vigilance, or a 1-1 counter at the beginning of your combat at random is... Yeah, it's random, but quite often, if it sticks around long enough, it's pretty solid. Then we have a few 4-drops. We have the Canopy Tactician here, again, is one of our elf actual payoffs, giving our elves plus 1, plus 1. And it also taps to add 3 extra green mana. Um, it is nice for the 1 or 2, the 1 expo we have, and also to getting up to those 6-drops. Then we have Oakham Adversary as a 4 mana 2 3 with Death Touch. It does get the discount of being cost 2 less. Our opponent controls a green permanent. And whenever it deals damage to a player, you get to draw a card. So a little bit of card draw in there. Another one of the Death Touch creatures in the format right now is Ornery Dilophosaur. Lophosaur? Not sure how you pronounce that. Anyways, it's a 4 mana 2 2 with Death Touch. And if you have a creature with power 4 or greater, it gets plus two plus two until the end of turn. But Death Touch pretty much kills anything. Koski, bearer of secrets. Indestructible. One one. Can't be countered. Taxi turn of fable. And whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. So if we have death touchers, people don't really want to block death touchers and trade because you're usually trading down. Um, so being able to draw extra cards with this is quite nice. Questing beast 
one of the other and final death touch creature in the format in mono green four mana four four vigilance death touch haste can't be blocked by creatures of power two or less combat damage that would be dealt by creatures you control that can't be prevented and whenever questing beast deals damage to an opponent it deals that much damage to target planeswalker that player controls and we have two five drop creatures with the battle mammoth it is a five mana six five with trample whenever one of your uh, permanence becomes targeted by a spell or an ability in opponent controls you get to draw a card if you wish and you can cast this for two mana four mana if you foretold it earlier for two elder gargaroth is a five mana six inch six inch six uh, six six english is hard sometimes especially after a long day of work vigilance reach trample when it attacks or blocks you get a three three beast creature token you gain three life or you draw a card whichever one of those three you wish we talked about vorinclex we talked about kogla we have castle garenbrig 18 forests crawling barons faceless haven and we're giving the tyrite sanctum a tribe finn is low enough con converted mana cost that doing this on him could be quite useful and making his power a little bit bigger so if we give him trample um that is a big help all right, and we can also make a god. If we get Finn, be a god, we can make him indestructible. All right, Finn, the Fang Baron. Death Touch, Mono Green, Stompy, Aggro. Let's do this. Right, Hood Pope, Warren Clex, Monstrous Raider. This is 100% a mulligan. We can keep this. Let's hope we draw a few more mana or maybe another death touch creature. One of our one ones would be nice. So we can get stuff out of the way. Not gonna play that. All right, come on deck. Um. Death touchy. Ah. Or kite sail. Mind you, they're probably not blocking at that point. This way we can save our rabbit bite for something a little scarier. They got Vorinclex next turn if they have a land. All right, land. Not much we can do right now. Get in again. There's those counters. Here comes Vorinclex. E. Battle Mammoth. Sure. Don't have mana. Interesting. Well, I think we play this. We can play our own Vorinclex. We draw a land that's six, seven, eight. That's Vorinclex plus Rabid Bite for the win. Unless this is a fight spell. Which is possible. They're going to try and dig with the Bonders Enclave. They have options. Lots of cards. We don't draw mana. We'll probably play Toski. Draw us a card. They're just trying to decide. Yeah. Kill the mana door. Get in for eight.
I guess now if we don't draw the land, we play Toski. If we draw the land, we play Gargaroth. They have the one mana fight spell too. Okay. Alright, there's land. For our own Vorinclex. That can be next turn. Thomas Vorinclex. All of them. Ozolith. All right. Man, drawing mana would have been so nice. That. This. Let's do this. Take away one of their mana. All right, what you got? This sets us up for Blizzard Brawl. And or Born Clex. Whatever they decide to do. Alright, there's Born Clex. Do they have the one mana removal spell? They don't have it. We got there. Yeah. Death touch for the win. Alright, let's do again. Hopefully we get a Control matchup. All right, is this like a big red or is this a regular red? This is a good hand. Although we are very fragile to burn spells. That is one thing that we have a hard time dealing with. That is also why we have some bigger creatures in the deck, not just aggro aggro. And I guess technically we weren't dead dead on that last game. The like guy kind of quit a little bit early rather than making us do the things to actually win the game. But it was nice. My right, Viper into Finn is a quite a good start. Unless of course they have like shock or what have you. They have something. Maybe they don't. Nope. All right. There's two. Two down, eight to go. They gotta have something. Bye bye, Finn. They're thinking, which removal spell do I use? Or which blocker do I put out? That's another option. Is which blocker do I put out? All right. I buy Moss Viper. At this point, I think we play this and then we flash in the wild born preserver at the end of turn. Uh, that'll give us access to ornery Diplosaur. Diplosaur. Mm -hmm. That also gives us access to Finn. Let them use all their removal. Pass. Just in case they have some kind of sorcery speed shenanigans. 
that's a nice one. I do think we play this and or we play Yorval and the Blight Blade and then get Finn in to attack. I think we do that. Play this. Line. This. Auto pay. Tap this. Line, take action, attack. Right, we got a death toucher out there again. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All right, do this. Do we just keep offloading our death touchers? I think so. Load them up. Take action. This is one. Tap this. That. Okay. Get in there. They want to trade with the death touch person. That's fine by me. We're attacking them on two angles. Sure. I'm going to kill that one. Mm hmm. Sure, this gets bigger, but this can potentially blow up our things, and we don't want that to happen. And this is going to turn into a 4 4 when we attack, anyways. Mm -hmm. Alright, that's okay. We're going to play Finn. Mm hmm. We're gonna attack with this, this, and this. For being aggressive on two angles. How do you want to die? All right. Now they have to have a board wipe that does a lot of da stuff. Shock there. I don't like the sound of that. That means this is a mass removal spell. Well, that's not good. Start the rebuild. Hmm. What do they got? Do they have a six drop? Feature or bigger? Nope. There's our land. That's just a matter of finding a way to get him through. That's not getting them through. That's giving their Torbrand X proof. All right, we got two things that give them flying. Interesting idea. Well, let's. Destroy our own artifact. Gonna put a 1 1 counter here. And I'm not going to attack. Mm hmm. Land. No blocks. 
Hey, got there. Boom goes the dynamite. All right, we did win against somewhat of a controlling mono red style of deck. It's not your beat them down, bash them up mono red deck. All right, a couple of good games. Let's do a post game. And yeah, let's do that. All right, Finn, the Fang Bearer. You saw us take down Warrenclex, which is actually probably one of the harder decks for us to actually deal with. Um, they did kind of scoop prematurely. But we did get the win, and that was fun. And uh, the other game we played against the Mono Red deck that is not the beat em up, smash em up style of Mono Red deck. Um, Torbran is definitely more of a controlling Mono Red deck. And we top deck the Flyer in mode for the win. That's why we're playing the Wings of Hubris and the Cliff Haven Kite Sail. We also almost got to uh, use this. To make him fin into a god that would have been kind of cool and very useful in that game uh, as far as the deck goes there's not many other there's a lot of other fight spells that you could possibly be playing i picked these ones because they were fairly low to the ground um struggle for skemfar could definitely be one i could see playing as the foretell cost is very inexpensive uh calony ambush was in the original version of the deck but um it just we already have a decent amount of those fight type spells and we don't want to oversaturate one thing you could end up looking at doing is going a little more rampy and playing more of the strong five drops like the vivians the ashayas auspicious strix stairs starix along with the likes of Rage Rampaging Brontodon. I'm becoming more and more into the Warden of the Woods. And cards like Ancient of Green Warden. We are also playing Hosky. So you could play some of the Mutate cards. Cards like the Gem Razor. Or migratory great horn that also that auspicious sterix thing is you can't mutate on to finn so i don't know how strong mutate is um toski could come out for another strong four drop you could maybe put the gem razor in take out the toski but the toski is nice for the card draw especially since green doesn't have a lot of card draw you could also play cards like adventurous impulse to go and look for our death touch creatures although i find there are these like you look at all the death touch in green one two three four five six seven with this so six death touches you have a pretty solid opportunity to draw one um once upon a time like i said in the deck tech gets us one yeah i think the deck is fun i think the deck you could go many different directions. You could play Voltron with Fangbearer and try to make him bigger with 1-1 one -one counters to make him harder to deal with. But I like that the deck attacks on two different angles. So being able to win with cards like Elder Gargaroth, Hogla the Titan Ape, along with Finn the Fangbearer. People have to pick and choose what they choose to destroy. And you saw that one point, they ch picked our 7-7 seven -seven Yorvo over taking down one of our Death Touchers or our Finn. So the deck attacks many different ways and uh yeah i hope you enjoyed it if you uh did enjoy like subscribe notify and hope you build something similar with fang or finn and i'm gonna start looking at him in commander maybe is building him in a commander deck or possibly in historic brawl all right have a wonderful morning afternoon evening or night wherever you are in the world mr pisto to you bye for now